Buddy? Oh, fuck. <laughs> hey, everybody. This is Mario Ranchi, brand strategist and founder of Manufacturer, here today with another episode of Ambitions of an Agency. Today, we're going to talk about the secret to creating great results and creating amazing things in this world in general, really. Um, and it's to be like, oh my god, what's the big secret? It's like, it's not a big secret. I'm just making that up. It's not really a big secret. Um, but what it actually is, is that it's just an observation you can find out after going through many different processes, whether you are doing stuff as a lawyer or a designer or even a business owner, you kind of pick up patterns around the way of how you manifest things into reality, right? You manifest things into reality, not like the law of attraction, but like actual fucking things, actual things that exist in reality, right? Whether it's design, you know, um, you know, uh, an actual like product or service, whatever it may be. So here's the thing. There's three things. It's first is gathering info. The second one is collating and finding patterns. And the third one is synthesize and apply. So those are the three things. These are the three things that people use, successful people use, or business owners in general, designers, whatever, anybody who uses a proper process is following some sort of those three things in the section, right? Even in social situations, right? How you use these different things, uh, how you use those three steps help understand how you interact in your social situations. Uh, but I'm going to talk mainly in this case about business and design. So as, you know, a person who understands that this is an information age, you know, an age where there's a lot of information, there's too much information for people to actually handle. And that can be a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because, first of all, there's a lot of information. You could literally take various different sources, various different points of views, and start understanding, you know, looking at different things and getting all. The bad thing is, is that you can get into analysis paralysis, which is getting too much info and not taking any action with it and not knowing what to do with it, right? You have so much info, you're overwhelmed by it. I mean, I have so much, I have all this info, and it's too much. I cannot... I cannot phantom. I cannot go through all of this info. And technically, you really can't. You can't really go through all this info all at once. It takes some time, right? Um, but a key source in doing that is getting a bunch of point of views, right, that you think are good, like a key few point of views that, you know, and, and after a time, you understand that those kind of point of views, the, you know, there's a few types of information that are similar to this type of information and they have this they're kind of similar with each other right and so that's when you start the collating process right because you start seeing different information after a while you kind of get exposed over time to a lot a lot of information right lots lots of information and then suddenly you get an insight as to oh these things are kind of similar they kind of connect with each other there there's small little bits here and there that are connecting with each other or, you know, they sound similar or just said in a different way, said in a different language, right? Semiotics, right? The, the way they're saying it is the exact, is the same thing, but they're saying it in different words, right? And suddenly you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense now, okay? So this is just the same thing, but in different words, right? Or then there's a completely other different point of view that contradicts the other point of view, right? And then you try to find the similarity between that as well. Um, so when you start doing that, you get into the collating phase, right? After you've gone out of that overwhelm of information, which is you kind of are just digging up information, you're just consuming it. And then suddenly, if you want to get past that phase of just consuming and get out of that analysis process, you have to start collating. You have to start bridging patterns, seeing connections. There will obviously be contradictions in all of the, this, this type of stuff. But if you're really looking for the right things, they will appear. And they will like, you will kind of start to see patterns. There's an eye you kind of get for like, you know, collating knowledge, collating different types of points of views and bringing them together, piecing the puzzles, right? You know, think of it really as a puzzle, right? You're trying to piece the puzzles to an accurate representation of what you're looking at, right? What is the actual truth of this knowledge that I'm looking at? And that's what you really need to ask yourselves. Like, what is the actual truth? These 
parts and pieces that all put together, you know, what is the actual truth combined around it, right? You know, of all the fluff, of all the thing, what is the actual truth, the underlying truth that is around all of this information, right? And that starts to give you an idea. You start to collate. You start to see different trends in the industry. You start to see different things in the, and you start to collate. You start to grab everything together and connect the pieces together, right? Um, and so this is, that's really, really, really important because after you start getting to the collating phase, you start to see connections. Then, after those connections are made, you have to find a way to apply them, right? You've made the, this, so how do you actually synthesize it? Which is the third step. How do you synthesize information? Now, you take all that collated information, the information that is all there that you know has an underlying truth under it, then you put it into a synthesizing mode, meaning you start to combine them together and see how does this actually work out? What if I combine a this or with that and how does and what combines what happens when I actually combine those two? Or what if I put this thing out in the market and it has this effect on this person? Or what if I put these two things together and they combine and they, you know, create something different or create a different effect, right? That's the synthesizing. That's when you're actually starting to create things. You know, in design, you're starting to take information from different sources, different information. You find the underlying truth, the main message, and then you create this, you know, verbal style, like the copywriting. Then you create the design, you create the pics, the pictures, all that stuff is based off that underlying truth, that underlying message that you've collated, right? With a product, it's the same thing. Elon Musk took a bunch of knowledge about batteries, you know, talked to a bunch of people about batteries and uh, electric cars and all this stuff, then found people to actually figure out and collate in the, all the information that he's gotten, you know, and then he finally built an actual product, a thing out of it, right? Um, and this is good, but obviously this stuff, when you're in the synthesizing phase, it do, this is the thing. People think at the synthesized stage, it's done, right? And the problem is this process repeats itself over and over again. Right? It's a circular cycle. You, you, but this part, when you get to the synthesized phase, you actually have to go back to the beginning phase and start you know, tweaking and improving the stuff that you already have and then going through it again. Oh, gathering knowledge from the feedback I got from the market, go back again, you know, uh, get the info, collate the info, put it back into the actual product or service. Right? Duh, duh, duh. All like that. It's like a circular cycle every time. Feedback. Infra, gather information, call it information, synthesize uh, to uh, and apply it, basically. And that is really the secret to creating great successful products, services, even, you know, e and design work, really. So yeah, this is a cool insight I got from one of my, uh, just, you know, doing this over and over again, you know, through every part of my processes um, and in my life. So I hope you'd enjoyed it. I hope you got some value out of it. And apply it, see how it works. See maybe if you're in the, uh, uh, what is it, the phase that you're not really, you're just doing analysis paralysis, or maybe you're still in the collating phase and you don't know how to synthesize, just start experimenting, right? You know, at those different phases, there's, you know, three things that you probably need to do. It's like paralysis analysis, you start and need to get into the collating phase. You need to start bringing knowledge together and finding patterns, right? And if you're at the collating phase, you need to get out there and get the experience and feedback from the market or experiences or whatever. Right? So you can go back and you can keep improving on your process, service, interactions, feelings, etc. So that's it. Hope you got some value out of it. And I will see you on the next one. Turn on notifications. You know, subscribe and have a great day. See ya. 